Welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. I was at the Walmart the other day, and this was the only car that stood out to me. I really loved the stance and everything about it. The roof's chopped. I wasn't too sold on the paint. I think they could have styled this a little bit better. A few things I'm not really feeling. It's pinstriping above the headlights. Bleh. I like the one on the back. I'm a fan of pinstriping, but it's got to be done right. So this screamed out to me that it needed new paint. It was the only car I bought. Uh, I know you guys are due for a restoration, and I've been looking. I've, I've been going through the cars trying to find something sweet, but in the meantime, i got a real special paint job in mind for this thing. So This is a 124 scale. It just needs a little bit of a restyle, I think. But it's got a sick chrome engine, dual exhaust, upgraded interior. We'll see it a little bit better once I start getting into it here, but... You can get little chrome pedals. A lot of this extra chrome they threw in just looks weird to me. I think the chrome line on this should not surpass these headlights. Got a little bit of fake chrome back here, but not on this window. Just everything seems kind of mismatchy, and this just sticks out way too much. So we're going to do a little bit of a restyle today with a super secret paint job, and we're going to make this thing look amazing. So let's dig into this. Check out the upgrades. That's a very, very cool car to customize. Got some newer buckets. Got ourselves a little hammerhead shifter. That's sweet. It's even got little Brembos. Sweet. So yeah, when I saw this model, I just had to buy it. I knew this is going to be one that would look amazing with a better paint job. We're going to do it, and it's going to be sweet. I'm not 100% sold on putting the bumpers back on. I'll have a look. I really like the look of a bug that's nice and smooth in the back here. This one might be the might be the one. We'll see if the stance is still good, but this looks like a fiberglass front end. If we got rid of these horn grills, these little mold lines smooth that all out. I think we'd have a really cool custom bug here. Oh, let's try this again. I like that much better. Um. I've always wanted a shaved bumper beetle, so this might be the one. I had this other beetle that I wanted to do this to, with no bumpers and everything. But this being a much larger scale, it's going to be way cooler than this little guy. So, man, that's some gaudy looking chrome. Ugh. Ugh. Terrible. That's pretty decent. Nice chrome bezel there, white face gauges. A little leather wrap on this bad boy, maybe. Huge potential for a model like this, and this was this cost me about twenty dollars Canadian. So I don't know if you guys something like this would be a lot cheaper, but ultra fun to work on. We're gonna be doing a black car with a big twist, so it should be cool. Everything else, I think we're gonna just leave on. We're gonna get her stripped as is. Say goodbye to this nice pastel blue. I'll get the stripper. You get the beer. Probably going to strip this the same way we did the Roadrunner the other day. Seemed to work out pretty good. So just going to put this in halfway. And we'll let the fumes do the work. Just pull some of this up here. Must have some sort of clear coat on it. You can see the inside stripping way quicker than the outside. Fairly durable so far. I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. Try to get the back half melted off and then we'll flip her and do the front. I think that looks better already. They always look good when they're bare, don't they? I know exactly what I'm going to do. I think it's going to look real clean without the bumpers. We're going to shave off these holes, make that all smooth. We'll go for a nice clean bumperless custom. I think that'll be real nice. I'm not a big fan of keeping little details like the horn grills and stuff and matching them up with these huge donk rims. Like it's just kind of the idea is confused to me. So 
since we're already chopped, we already got these big rims, we just got to finish off the styling on this thing because, I don't know, these bumpers with bumperettes, you just can't match that up with big, huge rims like this. In my mind, anyways. I like it a lot better like this. Even if we could get it just a tad lower, it would be, uh, it would be good to me. Okay, so we got some work to do here on this body. There's all kinds of dirty body lines all along these fenders and stuff. I got to clean all that up and get it nice and smooth. I'll just start cleaning it up. It's going to take a little bit of time. I've got lots of big body lines to clean up. So I am going to have to mix up some epoxy to fill these. Obviously all the way around. Do the ones in the back too. And we'll get that nice fiberglass one piece front end look which I admire. The reason we're doing most of this work is because this beetle's already chopped. I don't think I would uh, remove all the classic bumpers and stuff if it was still a pretty straight beetle. But since it's already been heavily modified, I just want to finish the job, you know? Finish what these guys started here. I gotta get this fender smoothed out. Starting to look better. Get nice and clean. Got the majority of our nasty casting lines removed. Got some more work to do right here. You can see that line. Sweet, so now that I got the casting marks cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and scotch bright the whole thing. UT, that's looking pretty sharp, I must say. Eek, 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 eek. Scotch Bright does such a nice job. All right, now I think I'll mix up some putty and we're gonna fill up some of these holes and smooth out, finish smoothing out the rest of this. Just because it's in bare metal mode, I would like to see what this looks like. Oh, hell yeah, man, it looks sweet. It's like DeLorean. DeLorean Beta. Very nice. Alright, that looks good. Let's mix up a little bit of putty here. Grab a little bit of this. JB Quick Weld High Heat. This is very tacky, this stuff. Do 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 do. The wrapper. We're going to just give this a little mix and we're just going to plug our bumper holes. Easy. This stuff's super duper tacky, but that usually works in our favors. It messes up our gloves, but it bonds to the car really well. Using a little bit of water helps the mixing process, but I do feel that it does change how well it bonds to the car. So for this little bit that we're doing today, I'm not going to use any water on my gloves. We're just going to tough it out and make sure we get this stuck in there very well. That's all we're going to do. We're going to let that dry, file it smooth, do a little bit of putty, and just smoothen all that up. Do the back. I'll do the same thing. I'm just pressing it in from behind until it comes out the front. Flatten it out a little bit. We got both sides covered well. And we'll let that harden up. Easy. I went for a coffee run. While our putty was hardening, I'm just gonna shave off the extra. Something like 
like that. We'll be able to smooth everything else out. We're going to do a little bit of filing to get these holes nice and flush before we put on our other putty. We're going to use a little bit of Tamiya putty here just to be our finishing putty. And this stuff is sandable, but you should always put it on in very thin coats if you can. I usually like to use my finger, but a stick will work just fine. Just put enough on there so that we can do a nice blend. Something like that. A couple little dents on this thing I wouldn't mind doing a little bit of putty on. So I'm going to leave it at that. We'll let that dry completely. We'll come back. We'll do some sanding. Get that all blended up nice. And we should be golden. Should be golden. So that's probably going to take a good 20 minutes to dry before it's sandable. I might help it out with a little bit of heat, but you know it doesn't take too long. So we'll be back in a minute. Once all of our finishing putty is nice and level, we could probably go right to paint here. It's looking pretty good to me. She's nice and smooth and flush. She should be completely gone once we get the primer on it and everything. Hell yes, yeah, so that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one last wash, get all the dust off it, get it ready, get it prepped for paint, and I'll meet you in the spray booth. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I have primed our bug. So now we got to paint this gloss black to be part of our effect. We're going to do something cool I saw on the Createx Colors Instagram. My man Chris did a paint job called Murder Candy. That's what we're going to do. I don't know where the murder thing comes from, but we're going to stop saying the M word. So we're going to do a gloss black on this, and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay. Now we're going to use a little bit of Hot Rod Sparkle Red. We're going to be doing pretty pretty heavy coats and we'll probably go for three or four coats and try to get this thing fully and evenly covered. But yeah. I'll mix up a nice batch of this. Hot Rod Sparkle is the biggest sparkles that I have. They're a little bit larger. They're kind of like 70s flake. This is something you want to spray wide open because you need your needle moved all the way back on these airbrushes to get these big, get these big sparkles through your tip, right? So one of those situations where we're going to have the gun wide open, but we're going to have it kind of further away from the, uh, the model than we normally would do. Just so we don't get any runs or anything like that. So there's our specimen. Looks really nice. There's red sparkles in there. Looks legit. We're going to do about three coats of this. We're going to go heavy on it. We want as many sparkles as we can get. You know what I'm saying, Vern? So let's, uh, let's do this. All right, we're going to stop there. So I got this thing completely sparkle bombed. The red doesn't show up that bright on black. That's okay because our next step, we're going to hit this with a light coat of blood red candy and it's going to bring out that red even more. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. We're going to mix up a little candy. 
We're going to dust this with some red and it's going to make our sparkles really bright. Just mixing up a small batch. I don't need much. Blood. That's why it's called blood red. Looks legit, right? Alright. As you can see, we're getting a lot more red in our color now. So now we're going to mix up some black candy. Yes, black candy. And that's basically going to be a transparent black. We're going to put over this to get that black color back. And these red sparkles are going to come right through that black when the light hits it and just pow. So it should be really cool. So we're going to let this set up for a second. We'll spray the candy black and then we can clear coat over top of that. Pink. So here comes our black. We're going to go ahead and tint our car back to a black color. Probably do about two coats. We don't want to cover up the sparkle effect. We want that to come through the black, but we do want the car to look black in the shade. There we go, we're back to black. I did one pretty light coat on there just to take the red back out. And now, we're pretty well ready to clear coat here. I might put a little bit of uh, silver on my tail lights just so I can do them red later. So I'm going to go ahead and do our door handles here. These chromey door handles. And I'm also going to do these tail lights because I want to come back and put some red on here, but I'm going to put the silver down first. And then my red's really going to pop once it's on top of that silver. So that's probably all I'm going to do for trim. We're pretty well just waiting for this to dry really good, and then I'm going to clear coat this thing, and we should have a, an amazing, amazing looking car, but. Uh, you know, it's my first time doing this, so we never know. Sweet. Look at it. I should have took off this license plate. My bad. I thought it would be cool to leave it on, but that was a... Uh, you screwed that one up there, boss. This is one of those paint jobs where every single speck of dust and every single fingerprint and everything is going to stick to it. So I'm going to do my best to keep it clean, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's get on rotisserie. All right. All right. Nice paint. Nice paint, bro. But where's the sparkle, right? We did all that work. Where's the sparkle? Let's adjust our lighting here a little bit. Oh my god. Doesn't that thing look slippery? There's one slippery beetle. That is one glossy paint job. So that's the effect we were going for. Is this very subtle red sparkle below the black. And I think that looks amazing. Because in the, in the shade... It's going to look like a black car, but when you get into the sun, you see all this awesomeness. You seeing this? You seeing this, Vern? It's very subtle, but wherever the sun hits, she glitters. That's what they call the murder candy. I was going to try to take the beetle outside, get some pictures in the sun, do some video, actually do the, the turntable out in the sun. First time I ever wanted to do that and it's an overcast day so if you guys want to see some pictures of this bad boy out in the sun, be sure to check out my Instagram. I usually try to post pictures of all the cars there once I'm done videos. And I sometimes post stuff from, from work and just throughout my life. I'm going to try to post more personal stuff. 
A lot of you guys have seen the videos already, so no big surprise to see a picture of a car there. This was a super fun project. Anything that's uh, really paint related, I love. So this was uh, definitely one for my wheelhouse. I got a couple little how-to videos coming up uh, throughout this week. Probably be like Wednesday or something like that. But then the next car will be on Saturday. So that's when I'll see you next time. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one.